Hello guys, uh, Dejan here, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's uh, video I'm going to show you how to paint uh, Jotum or Jotum. I'm not really sure how to correctly pronounce his name uh, for Panoceani Army. Uh, it's actually a big tag. So what I wanted to do here is just to try to paint him in the uh, traditional paint scheme but add some weathering and uh, some uh, damaged effects on him so that I simulate that he has been a long time in service and that he has been worn from usage. So without uh, further ado, sit back, uh, relax and enjoy the uh, rest of the video. I will start with uh, priming uh, my model with the uh, black primer from Vallejo. Uh, this is a really good uh, primer actually that uh, leaves the surface uh, very matte and it's very easy to paint over it. Uh, I will use uh, airbrush, uh, but uh, it's totally not necessary for this step. Uh, you can use a can, but I prefer uh, using the airbrush uh, because I have uh, more control actually. And I will go uh, in uh, three or four passes uh, from the different angles uh, so that I have a total like a hundred percent coverage uh, uh, from all angles so that you cannot see any metal under it uh, and you want uh, this uh, layer to be uh, really good so you don't uh, chip them off uh, by accident just by touching miniature. Now I will change to light ghost gray. It's another Vallejo primer and this time I will spray the model uh, from the top. Uh, what I want to achieve in this step is to cover uh, all the armor panels uh, that uh, I want uh, to be a different color, that want to be a brighter color uh, because it will be much easier uh, to paint them over the gray than to paint them over the black and uh, this will help me uh, to make uh, some details uh, visible on the model so it will be much easier for me uh, later to paint the details so I will do this only from above uh, I won't go from any angle uh, uh, from the middle or from the under the model so it will be just from the above just to simulate how the light is uh, falling down on the model and uh, this will help me as well uh, to mark some uh, points of light for me for the future reference so that I can paint uh, easier later. So I will try to uh, imagine in my head that the light is coming from the top uh, and I will just uh, spray a little puffs uh, of this primer uh, on those armor panels so when I apply the next paint it will be much easier. This is doable with the spray can as well. The uh, only thing is that uh, you won't have this much control as you have it uh, with the airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush, you can just uh, repaint the whole model uh, gray. Uh, you don't actually need to repaint his uh, gun because uh, he needs uh, to be black. Uh, next thing uh, that I'm going to do is uh, I will paint uh, all the blue armor panels uh, with the dark Prussian blue. Uh, this step is totally doable uh, with the brush, so if you don't have airbrush you can just uh, paint them uh, with your brush. Uh, the other thing with these big models is they, they look that they have a lot of details, but actually they don't because it's mostly like the flat armor panels which are like super boring. Uh, so the thing that we have to do is to create some details on this model. So for that I will use uh, my airbrush just to create uh, some points uh, of light. Uh, if you don't have an airbrush uh, you can skip the next step uh, because I will do the highlights uh, with uh, the airbrush. It is possible to do them with the brush, but it will take a lot of time and I don't think it is worth spending that much time on the brush works uh, when actually you can do them in like three or four minutes uh, with the airbrush with a minimum effort. 
Uh, for the next step, I will mix 50-50 uh, blue-green uh, with the dark Prussian blue and I will start marking uh, points of light uh, on the blue armor panels. So I will just pick up an angle like 45 degrees from the model and I will just uh, spray uh, little spots on the top of the blue armors which are mostly exposed uh, to the light. So I will pick them up uh, on some spots and I will just uh, make some sprays. Uh, like uh, on the legs, on the chest, on the shoulder pads, uh, on that thing that he have on his jetpack. So just a uh, little puffs, uh, just to make uh, a highlight start popping out. Now I'm going to add uh, a white to the mix, uh, just to make a really bright, uh, like a blue paint. And then I'm going back. Uh, to enhance uh, these points of light, uh, but this time I will spray much less areas that I sprayed uh, before, uh, just to create uh, a reflections of the light uh, where they are going to be the most striking. So this is the point when we are actually creating those details on those uh, boring armor panels. And for the final highlight, I'm going to use a pure white and this will be the least highlight. So this will be the smallest areas uh, covered and uh, they are going to be on the most raised areas on the tops of the model. Uh, so you don't need to go anywhere lower and uh, it's really small uh, puffs just to make uh, the highlight, just to finish it off. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to pick up a matte varnish spray and I will just uh, spray this model with a matte varnish uh, just to protect uh, all the work I did so far so that I don't chip it or scratch it uh, by accident. So this is how the model looks uh, after this stage. So from this moment on we are going to use only paintbrush and uh, finish off uh, with painting this model. Uh, we are going now to start highlighting all these uh, armor panels that we just airbrushed. Uh, so we will do them with a pure white and uh, just go and do the edge highlights. Uh, so pick up your brush and just go and trace uh, like all the sharp edges on these uh, armor panels that you can see and uh, draw a very thin lines. Uh, this can be time consuming, so take your time. You don't need to do everything in one go. Uh, you can always uh, make a break, uh, start painting the rest of the model and then just come back later and finish it. Uh, that's how I did it. I did a half now, then I went to the next step and then later I came back and just uh, finish off uh, those uh, few remaining highlights. Uh, now I'm going to start painting his, uh, let's say, off-white uh, armor panels. I will start with the pale blue and this color is perfect actually for this because this paint is a mix of the white and blue, actually the gray and blue. Uh, so since uh, our primer is gray and I have overspray uh, of the blue over it, it actually covered uh, this model perfectly. So I did uh, two very thin coats uh, and just blocked uh, all the armor panels that I want uh, to be white with this paint. So I pick up my, uh, you can see this is a really huge brush and I just go around and slap that paint uh, and just painted it in uh, two very thin coats. Uh, now I'm going to pick up ivory and I will just uh, paint uh, all these uh, armor panels that are going to be uh, white. This will be their final paint. Uh, the thing uh, when painting uh, with this paint, uh, you have to be a uh, very patient. Uh, so apply one thin coat and then wait for it to properly dry and then apply a second thin coat and that will be enough, you will have a good coverage. If you come back while the paint is still wet, uh, you won't achieve that much actually, you will just keep uh, moving pigments around and uh, you won't have a good coverage. So just wait for the first layer to completely dry and then come second time and just uh, paint it. 
And now we are going to move uh, to the black parts of this model, uh, like his gun, uh, his gloves, uh, and all those uh, black armor panels that he have on the legs. So I just pick up a pure black and I just went uh, around this model. Only one coat is needed. Uh, and just try to be as much careful as you can when you go close uh, to the blue or, or to the white armor panels that we already painted because you don't want to make a mistake here and accidentally mess this part up because it will be quite a hassle to repair them. And now I will mix a cavalry brown with a orange brown. I will make a 50-50 mix. And I will uh, paint uh, this uh, flamethrower canister. Uh, so I will paint both of them. And uh, this will be done in uh, two very thin coats. Uh, same as before, wait uh, for the first coat to completely dry and then apply the second one. And uh, if you do that correctly, uh, you won't have to do anything else with these colors. It, you will have a good coverage, you won't see any black under it, and uh, it will be ready to move on. And now we are going to start placing the first highlights. So I will just use a pure orange brown. And uh, I will start placing the highlight, uh, like because these canisters are cylinder objects, so they have the, uh, the highest point of light at the middle. So what I did actually, I put my lamp on the top so that I have a natural reflection. So I just uh, follow these uh, lights uh, with my orange brown and I just drove them in the middle of these canisters. Now for the next highlight, I will mix uh, sunny skin tone like 50-50 and I will just place it in the same manner as before. Uh, but this time I will cover much less areas in the middle. As you can see, I'm mostly doing uh, stippling and uh, drawing uh, straight lines than actually uh, like uh, painting with the full uh, side of my brush. And for the last and final highlight on these canisters, I'm going to use a pure white and I will just uh, put a very small dots and very small lines, uh, like literally I'm just stippling a little as my final highlight in the middle. Now uh, the last step is going to wash uh, these canisters. I'm going to use the sepia ink and just apply it uh, as a wash. And then uh, I will clean up my brush and I will just uh, clean up all the excess of this ink from the most uh, highest highlight while I will leave it uh, inside the recesses just to create the shadows. Uh, next thing that uh, we're going to paint on this model will be all the LEDs. So I will just put the base paint of a scarlet red on them. At this stage you need to be uh, really precise. So pick up your uh, smallest brush and uh, fix your both of your hands on the table so you don't shake and just uh, paint these LEDs. And for the final highlight on these LEDs, I will use uh, orange fire and I will just uh, put a small dot or a very small line in the middle of these lights. For the next step, I will mix uh, like 50-50 dark Prussian blue and the black uh, just to create a very dark uh, blue paint. And I will start tracing the lines on his gun and uh, actually on the rest of the black uh, parts of the armor. Uh, these lines uh, doesn't need to be thin, uh, they can be thick uh, because uh, they will create a, a small highlight and they will distinguish bec uh, between the black and the next highlight that we are going to do with uh, white. 
As I said, uh, for the final highlight, uh, you're going to use uh, white. Uh, just uh, pick up your uh, like most precise uh, brush and uh, you're going to do the edge highlight uh, on all the black areas. Uh, how are you going to do this? It's like mostly you're going to use the side of your brush. So just to make an angle from like 45 to 90 degree against the surface and then just start uh, pulling your uh, brush in the sun small strokes so it will create uh, a sharp lines on the edges. Uh, where that is not possible, use your tip of your brush and uh, just draw uh, small and very thin lines. Uh, so I used this step and I went uh, around the whole model and I highlighted all the black parts and the remaining of the blue ones that uh, I didn't highlight it before. Now I'm going to use a dark Prussian blue and I'm going to freehand uh, some markings on his armor. Uh, so I will uh, draw them on the shield and on the chest plate. I will try to copy the ones uh, from the box art. Actually, if you are not that confident, uh, you don't need to be like a really 100% uh, precise. Uh, those lines doesn't need to be like a 100% straight because we are going to do some weathering on top of it. So you would actually not be able to see the mistakes uh, that we made uh, in this step, but at least uh, try to make them uh, look uh, decent. Uh, for the next step, uh, pick up a uh, pure white and some very very old brush that you're not going to use for anything uh, uh, precise and just uh, make a 90 degree angle and just dab it on top uh, of these uh, markings that we already painted so this will create it like a chipping effect like that these stripings are damaged and they, they start peeling off so that you can see the paint uh, under it so just go around, uh, take your time and uh, just do this uh, dubbing until you are satisfied uh, with the effect. Now we are going to do the completely same, but uh, with the Rhinox hide. Uh, but we are going now all over the model. So you're going on the blue and on the white armor panels and you're going to try, so just rest your brush on the edge and just pull it down in uh, any direction. Uh, so you're going to create a chipping effect uh, like uh, on the, all the, those areas. So just go forth and back, uh, dab your uh, old brush uh, and uh, create those effects. And for the final thing that we are going to do is to create some rust effects. So we are going to use a sepia ink and we will try to fill up uh, all the recesses with this ink uh, just to create the effect of the rust uh, piling up there. And then uh, on the edges you are going to use uh, like a top of uh, your brush or just the tip and just pull them in the downward direction uh, just to create the effect of the rust uh, naturally going down. And that's it, uh, this model is done. Uh, we'll just transfer him to the base that I made before. Uh, if you're interested how, I will include the link uh, in the description section down below. I hope you guys uh, like this video. 
If you did, uh, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It will mean a lot to me and it will help this channel grow. And uh, if you have any comments or questions or any suggestions or would you like uh, me to paint something else and do it in some different style or different way, uh, please leave a comment in the section down below and I will try to do my best. Uh, this is all for now. Guys, uh, stay safe, take care and uh, see you soon. Bye bye.